guys, how's it going? I am so excited for today's video. It's gonna be 100% dedicated to the west side of our house, the brick pathway area. And I know I've talked about it a lot, like probably too much, but projects like this don't happen really quickly. Like we've been talking about it for a couple of years. You have to plan for it, you have to budget for it. And then when it's actually being done, it seems like it takes forever because you just wanna see what it looks like. So we can finally start planting, but I wanna give you a tour of this whole area show it, you guys what it looks like finished before we actually start putting in plants. And we do have some beautiful concrete we're gonna place later on in this video over here. I wanted to start on this side though, because we had both sides of the driveway lined with brick because there was no really good dis like distinguishing line between mulch and gravel. So you guys know what happens, like people drive on it, walk on it and gravel gets like kind of pushed into your uh, mulch and mulch, they just start to mix and it looks kind of messy. So we had this whole, area it goes right along here in fact they built up a step right here because the gravel kept wanting to kind of slough down into this sidewalk because it had been built up over the years so high uh, and eventually so like later on down the road years probably from now we will uh, go ahead and continue the bricks on down because we want to every year we were talking Aaron and I were talking the other night every year we want to kind of tackle one section and put the same kind of brick in so that we have a continuing like design um, so that there's not like this and that, you know, pavers here, brick here, flagstones there, you know what I mean? Um, so it kind of looks like we had a well thought out plan in the end, but they stop right here um, because you can see this concrete barrier there. We are going to at some point redo the entry garden here um, just because the sidewalk is very narrow and we wanna create maybe a little bit of a more welcoming entrance. So that will happen later on. But if you look down the driveway, you can just see how nice the brick edging makes everything look. So you can see it on this side here. Um, and it goes right up to our vegetable garden. Let's run over here and take a look. So it stops right here. And this is where the Sweet Romance Lavender Hedge picks up, which I cut them all back. They're all flushing and doing wonderfully. Um, so when those are grown, this will kind of disappear behind or kind of into the lavender. So it won't look like, you know, it just stops abruptly. And then this boxwood, I'm going to let get, you know, fairly good size and keep it in a sphere. Um, so this area is pretty much ready to plant. We might come in and work the soil up a little bit because they did have some heavy machinery in here, um, which can kind of compact everything down. So the pathway comes right here. That's one access. And then there's an access down on the other end, but it goes right up to the garden space. So there's a nice line between gravel here and brick pathway. We did have a big flagstone. I have it sitting right here uh, last year because as you guys know, it was just all dirt and mud for a long time. And I wanted something, something to step on right here. Um, but now it's just a nice clean line. So I think phase two of this project is to kind of do a miniature, very miniature version of this over on the other side of the garden because I haven't really thought through that area yet. So let's just take off down this way. Let's look at it, it is so pretty. We have the five red point maples in this section right here. This is the first area we will start to plant. I actually already have the plants for it. So you'll probably see those videos coming out pretty soon. And then we have four little brick pads that we had built up. There, so there's one here and then the next one is here. Basically, they all sit right in the middle of each set of maples we have. So there ended up being four of them. This is where we're gonna be placing the beautiful concrete pieces here in a minute. Um, but right toward the very end, you can see we have a spring snow crabapple tree planted right there and it might stay, but we were talking about maybe later on putting some kind of a beautiful concrete piece, a fountain or maybe a statue or just something that gives you something beautiful to look at from the very end of the pathway. Also, you guys, the pathway is straight. And I struggled with that decision, like, do I curve it? It's such a narrow area. And I knew, I knew deep down that I needed it to be straight for this area, just because I think if I went curved with how wide we wanted this pathway, I think it would have looked like I was trying too hard to make a nice curvy pathway where it just didn't make sense. And I think with the type of formal plantings I'm gonna have on this side, and then the concrete pieces straight worked out a little bit better because I didn't want the curve to neck down my planting and design area. Um, so I am super, super happy with this. And actually Aaron uh, was saying the other night that he's, he likes it straight. He was very unsure. He wanted it to be curvy a little bit. 
um, and I just struggled with it so much. Anyway, um, I am so happy we went with this. And in other areas of our garden, we do have more curved pathways, like the pallet walkway is fairly curved. I love that look, but it just didn't make sense for me to do it right here, to me anyway. And that's totally personal opinion, you guys. Um, everybody has their own style, and it usually ends up looking awesome if you just go with your gut. Well, you'll end up loving it more anyway. So I do have all these plants that I've talked to you about before. I've got some trees down here that we're ready to plant here pretty quick. Um, and then the pathway curves right toward the driveway again, and it lines up with the middle of our driveway there so that I can put a couple, probably like right here and maybe here, a couple of pots or something to kind of like designate, like here's a pathway, here's an entry to the, this part of the garden. And then, so the driveway initially, it was actually out this far. So we widened it by, I don't know, maybe like two, two and a half feet right here so that it wasn't so narrow here to turn. Cause you know, we, we do trailers. We have people come in, like the guys who built this, they had trailers full of gravel and things. So we have to have good access right here. And they followed the same curve as that interior fence to make this curve right here. And I asked them to do that because I didn't really want this area just to go boom, like right into the fence. I wanted there to be an ease about it down here. So this will be plantable area. There's still some gravel we need to remove, but I thought it would be nice just to kind of fluff it up right here and make it pretty from this view too, because we've got driveway going this way. So I was kind of thinking like from all angles, how in the end we can make this look really nice. All right, so we're at the first pad here um, where we're gonna place the concrete. But before we do that, I do have to go grab the angle grinder and we need to create a notch just about this far, like two bricks worth um, into the pad so that we can run some drip tubing. We meant to have the guys leave us a little gap so that we could easily get drip tubing in and we completely forgot. Um, but an angle grinder should do the job really quickly. So I used this angle grinder here, which we actually bought for our patio project we did at my brother and sister-in-law's house last year, um, to make a notch right here. That way, and I brought some tubing out to test, we can run our tubing right underneath our concrete pieces and it'll be hidden. Otherwise, we'd have to go up over the top and you'd have cords, like tubes hanging down and that doesn't look very good. So I'm gonna do the same thing on the next three. You guys, I am so in love with the way these urns look. I mean, I have waited two years to see what everything was gonna look like put together, like the path done and the urn set. I mean, just having it written down on paper, which I've written it out a million times, just doesn't do it for me like seeing it in real life. And I wanted to start down right here because you can still see all the urns, but at this angle, the arborvitas look like a hedge already, like a complete hedge if you stand up you can see everything behind. So let's move back down where it looks a little prettier. And eventually these arborvitas will create a green wall behind all of this that we're doing. Um, they grow about 10 to 15 feet tall. They're the variety called North Pole and three to five feet wide. Um, so eventually they'll create a nice privacy screen and a beautiful green wall behind everything we're doing. And we have wonderful neighbors, but it's just really nice to create that just green space and it'll really set all of my plants and these urns apart. So let's talk about these urns first. I actually ordered two of them last fall because I wanted to see the scale. I wanted to make sure I loved the design and the second I saw them, I knew that it was perfect for this project. Um, and I just didn't wanna order everything uh, before I really had decided, because I knew I could use two urns really anywhere on our property. But when you're investing in uh, something this large, this many pieces, you want it to be perfect. 
Um, so we did a couple videos with winter arrangements in them and it was just, I just have loved them. And then both of these pieces came from Unique Stone. We will link both down below. This is called the Esplanade Urn and the pedestal, I can't remember, remember the name of it, but they come separate. And it was a really hard decision for me because like there's a page of urns and a page of pedestals and you kind of have to mix and match and decide what you think will look the best. Um, and so that was kind of like, I went back and forth, but I chose one that didn't have a whole lot of design on the bottom because I wanted all of this detail to really shine. Um, and I wanted this to be what you really focus on. And I do have plans. I know exactly what's gonna go in all of these containers this year. We'll do a video on it when we get ready to plant. It should be in the next, I think, couple of weeks. But I did wanna show you this. So the back of this urn, this one came in broken. And I'm gonna be using some concrete glue on the back. This is one of the ones that came in last fall. Yeah, come around and take a look at this. So I'll just be fixing it with some concrete glue. It'll just sit in there nicely. And it doesn't bother me at all because honestly, like when I order stuff at my parents' garden center, I'm essentially a customer. And when something like this comes in broken, companies usually just credit and send a new one. So I've actually got this one for free, which was amazing because we had been, we knew this was gonna be a big project. We had saved for it and budgeted for it. Um, so that was just kind of a nice little extra boost that we got. Um, so anyway, that doesn't bother me in the slightest. So obviously the next step in this whole project is to get all of these trees down here planted. We are gonna get some mulch in. We have to run drip lines. We're gonna get some boxwoods planted. In fact, I might even place the boxwoods later today. We'll see. So that video will probably be coming out pretty soon, but I just wanna start planting stuff. And I even bought some zinnia seeds to fill in some blank areas. Uh, because this is a pretty good size area and I'm not sure how quickly we'll actually be able to fill it up but that's part of the fun is just kind of like working on it and I don't know like things like this arborvita hedge you kind of have to use your imagination and have to think about what things will actually look like in the future um, and that's for me that's kind of half the fun is watching things kind of fill in I'm going to be buying about five or six more of these arborvitas I did not realize that this stopped so suddenly and then there's an urn and I want the green wall to be probably down to about the birch down here. So I'll probably get five, six, maybe seven more arbs um, just to kind of finish off that wall and then we'll start in with our planting in front of those. The very last thing I wanted to show you guys was the drip. So this is where I notched out with the angle grinder, um, the drip tubing just goes in there nice and easy. I made it wide enough so it was flexible so we could really like there's some play there and then it goes right up through the pedestal because it's hollow and then right through the drain hole up into the container like this. We left ourselves a lot here so we can pull out more. See look at this like it just it pulls pretty easy. Um, so anyway that should work out really good. We are going to uh, run a specific drip line for the containers so they can run separately from everything else. And then that, doing it this way eliminates you from having drip tubing hanging out the back of your pot like this. And if you can avoid that and like think ahead a little bit, it just looks so much better. So anyway, guys, I am just so excited about this project. I went to bed, like not able to sleep last night because I knew we were gonna be placing these this morning. And I was just so excited to see what they look like. And I'm also really excited to bring you guys along for this whole like kind of redo and we'll show you every step of the way what we're doing and what we're planting. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed seeing this part come together and we will see you in the next one. Bye.